Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at the changing global demand for water. This is part of Paper 2, Unit C, The Challenge of Resource Management. Let's start off by thinking about global water supply. 97.5% of all water found on Earth is found in seas and oceans, so therefore is salt water that can't be used unless it goes through the expensive process of desalinisation. This means that only 2.5% of global water is fresh water, and in fact only about 20% of that total fresh water is available to use as the majority of it is in the form of glaciers and ice sheets like you can see on the screen. So what do we actually need water for? About 69% is used in agriculture for crop irrigation and drinking water for livestock. About 20% is used for industry, for processing and manufacturing, but also as an ingredient in many food and drink products. About 6% is domestic use, which is in the home, for things like drinking and cooking, bathing and showering, flushing toilets, and using things like washing machines and dishwashers. But we also have some water being used for energy use, for example, generating hydroelectric power, and for cooling in power stations. And we also use it for leisure, for example, outdoor water sports, swimming pools, water needed in hotels, and things like artificial watering on golf courses. So what's the global water pattern across the world? Well, before we think about this, we need to know some key terms. There is a gap between supply and demand for water right across the globe. There are places where the water supply exceeds the demand, which is known as a water surplus, and places where the demand for water exceeds the supply, which is known as a water deficit. There are many areas suffering from serious water deficit issues, and they're said to be experiencing water stress, which is a temporary inability to meet the water needs of the population, either because there is not enough water, or because the water is poor quality following contamination. We also need to understand the term water scarcity, which is the lack of fresh water resources to meet the standard water demand, and the term water security, which is having a reliable access to a sufficient quantity of clean water. And when people don't have this, they're said to be experiencing water insecurity. So most countries suffering from water scarcity are in the southern hemisphere, there is plenty of fresh water in the Northern Hemisphere, which is dominated by high income countries, where large areas across Asia and Africa will suffer water stress where they're struggling to meet the water needs of their populations. These are largely LICs and NEEs. Many of these countries are also bordering hot deserts, so are areas where the rainfall totals are low. Most of Europe and South America have water security for the majority of the time, but they can be at the risk of water insecurity at times of drought. So in recent decades, the demand for water across the globe has increased significantly. So let's have a think about why that's happened. The first and main reason is global population growth. In 1950, the world's population was estimated to be around 2.5 billion people, increasing to around 6 billion by 1998 and 7 billion in 2010. On the 15th of November 2022, the global population hit 8 billion, which was considered a huge milestone in human development, taking just 12 years to increase by 1 billion people. The global population is predicted to hit 9 billion people by 2037, taking 15 years to increase by another billion, which does show that overall population growth is starting to slow down. However, we need to remember that the countries with the highest level of population growth are those countries that are already struggling with water resources and are already experiencing food, water and energy insecurity. So therefore, population growth is likely to lead to more people suffering from water stress as the demand for water for domestic use increases. Countries with the lowest gross national income or GNI per capita also tend to have the highest fertility rates. This means that the global population growth is mainly concentrated in the poorest countries, usually in sub-Saharan Africa. In fact, population growth across the whole of Africa is 2.5 per year on average, compared to just 0.1% in Europe. 
The second reason is economic development. As countries start to develop economically, the population will have more money to spend on better housing, which may have baths and showers, as well as flushing toilets. They may also have water-intensive domestic appliances, such as washing machines and dishwashers, which will drive up the domestic demand for water. Economic development will also see investment into thirsty manufacturing industries that use huge amounts of water in production, and will see a shift from subsistence agriculture to commercial farming, which uses a significant amount of water for irrigation. As wealth increases, so does the demand for water, and HICs have been consuming huge amounts of water for these reasons for many decades. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on the change in demand for water around the world. Thank you for watching.